This is a story of intrigue, deceit, and sabotage, and how one man rose to power. Everything looked fine until he got inside. It was it's kind of like a story that begins with everything was all well. Gordon, I wish I had the answers. There's just nothing clear. Steve's in for psychological evaluation. And it, it just feels wrong. Something's wrong. I think it's an inside person that's uh, sabotaging. All right. We'll talk to you later. I'm going to be president of Gordon Water someday. Oh, Mr. Dysonhoff. Oh, this file is way too thick. Okay, all you had to do, you, all, you, all you had to do, what does he have to do? All you have to do is go down to Gordon Water and talk to the people down there. They're going to tell you, they're going to tell you who I am, that I'm the president of the company. She wouldn't let him out the door uh, until he had the box of cereal and she knew what exactly he wanted to do or what she wanted him to do with the box of cereal. So he comes back to me that day and uh, the guy just didn't seem right. He, he was a little shaken up and, and just didn't know what to say. So I think that this box of cereal and the lady in, in Plainwell led, led to this individual's paranoia. They're going to tell you, they're going to tell you who I am. I asked the sales guys, they said, have you seen him? And they said, well, he left. He got in his truck and went home. And uh, that was the last I seen him for three or four days. And he left me a few notes under the door late at night after that. and. Uh, after a cell phone call later, he basically said that uh, he was so flustered that he just had to get out of here. And uh, Never knew where, where this person was, where he was, always working somewhere. <laughs> Nobody really knew. Uh, kind of um, thought he was a ladies' man. <laughs> and I, I'll never forget the time that he and somebody were riding somewhere to deliver water. <laughs> he pinched her. <laughs> in public and in broad daylight. This gleam in his eye, I was terrified. I didn't know what to do. I did not know. Should I call 911? So I just tried to defuse the situation, get everybody back to work, return him back to his And um, here's what Dick office. Kent has to say. In fact, that's how MBE got started. When he was trading water for services, the place that he started out with was uh, Nice little place in Three Rivers, I believe it was a massage bar. <laughs> and he would trade the water for a little massage service. <laughs> Down in Three Rivers. <laughs> uh, well, I'm down in Three Rivers right now. It'll be, uh, be a little bit yet. And now let's get with the bald guy. Yeah, but the fun part is, uh, you should have seen his brother. And in fact, you might have seen his brother. He mumbles to himself as he's driving along. You know, he'll mumble to himself, and he carries on a conversation. And, uh, he's not eating a fruitcake. He's lighting his loafers and all those things. <laughs> all you gotta do is talk to them. I'll tell you the truth. I'll tell them the truth one thing. Yeah, they will. Uh, here's what Judy has to say. Um, I can't say that he was a heck of an employee because he gave us some problems, but he would have been an attribute had he had a brain. Yeah, he just looked like a little lost dog. He was just like... <laughs> I've been there, seen it all, done it all. Uh, none of it well. Just kind of broke the mold when they made him uh, totally. 100% in his own world and he's the only guy that knows he's not there. I don't know why I'm here. I'm really not sure what, what he does around here. He, uh, he fills in a lot. I know he, when an emergency comes up, I have to go fix it after he's taken care of it. But, uh, you know, he, I'm just not sure what he does. He just floats around from one spot to another. <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> I have no idea. This gentleman liked barley pop. Uh, he had it at inappropriate times. And he had to do this uh, in the evening hours when no one would see him. And he had to do it with company vehicles. And he had an accident. And, uh, got hit in the head. Anyway. 
Mr. Catastrophe. His whole world's caving in like Chicken Little, the sky is falling. You know, and everybody around there, you know, need to catch it for him or boom, going down, going down hard. You know, it still hurts. I was told he was a bit of a big head. But not too smart. The type of guy we like to have. But he's an airhead. He don't got it all. I mean, like, <laughs> we were standing up by the door, right, um, helping put some stuff in. And I kept um, going with my voice like, You have a phone call? You have a phone call? And he kept going in the office. He did it like five times. And they kept saying, you know, we ain't calling you. And as soon as he go in and come back, you know, he was like, what's going on? Then I was, got a phone call? You got a phone call? <laughs> it worked every time. It was so funny. He couldn't handle it, you know. He couldn't handle it. And that's why he's no longer here. Character description. Uh, lion drug addict. <laughs> Weasel. <laughs> anal. <laughs> Very anal. <laughs> I guess it hurts not being here so very much to not have a history like a lot of these guys do, huh? Let's check in with Andy Dungy. To describe his personality, he was a smooth talker. Uh, a lot of people would have had no idea how devious he was. Uh, one of those rare individuals that can lie, you don't even know he's lying, he's that good at it. The type of guy we like to have. Now let's talk with Dan Huffman. Times very annoying <laughs> because he's a very opinionated person he wants to uh, get his opinion across any way shape or form and uh, he f he's not one of those people that can actually give you his opinion he's got to force his opinion on you so that would really describe him he'll turn all red in the face his hair will start flapping down he'll start scratching his head more his eyes will get huge all you have to do is go down to Gordon Water and talk to the people down there. They're going to tell you, they're going to tell you who I am. That I'm the president of the company. I don't belong in here. Whoever said that? Hothead. Uh, gets upset easy about little things. Uh, he's fun to, he's fun to irritate. All you got to do is bring up some old stories. And now let me introduce Penny Kwan. I had some pecan tarts left from Christmas. Those were gone. The loaf of bread was gone. The potatoes were eaten. Um, candy was gone with the wrappers. <laughs> I had broken glass. I had water spilled. Uh, he's always a little smirk, you know. Hands in the pocket. It was a time when he uh, came out of his office storming and Nobody really knew what the problem was, but he had his hands in the air and he was muttering something that nobody could understand. But uh, he'd stormed through the office, stormed in the production room, and, and still was walking around muttering. And, and uh, at the end of the incident, he couldn't remember what he was storming okay. around. About. All you have to do, all you, all, you, all you have to do, what does he have to do? Picks up his cart. I mean, I swear I've never seen a person throw a cart so far. Threw it into the van, knocked bottles all over. Just his face was so red, I thought he was going to freaking explode. But uh, <laughs> I can definitely see him getting riled up over uh, very little. Oh, uh, well. Mr. Militant. And I worked with him and I. I mean, just, <clears throat> I mean, Clyde. Clyde. Two different personalities. Every week there's a new argument pending. Uh, another fellow employee used to say that's what he looked forward to every week to see what was going on. We got so intense one time. He's sitting there up against the wall just shaking, just shaking. He thought I was going to kill him, which I wasn't going to. But he was just so, oh, I could not believe oh, No. And this man was just get underneath everybody's skin. Especially mine, and he knew it. He knew what he was doing to me, and he wanted to get to me. <laughs> what is up with that? A guy that... <laughs> it's hard to describe a guy like that. I mean, <laughs> I never met him, but he told me he stays up on the internet. Almost. Or half the night. He comes in here tired looking. <laughs>
Getting tired. I said, uh, so I said, so you're early, and he said, with the gave me the number one finger. <laughs> he gave me the number one finger and said, mm, and you and and uh, it caught me off guard because I was just kidding and I mean it was just funny. And that's the first time I seen the, his side. <laughs> that was like legend in here. So. I really don't even want to talk about this anymore. Um. He tells a lot of stories. Uh, you gotta, you gotta take, kind of pick and choose what you listen to. He has a lot of, a lot of stuff to say. The, the spaceship kind of like came down, you know, and it, and it, and it landed, and uh, these little creatures came out, and they, uh, they took me in. They said you come with us. I don't know where it was, but uh, had to kind of use the facilities and. Uh, so he went upstairs, no one was home, he went upstairs and used the facilities and uh, ended up uh, doing some damage and uh, needed to find a plunger. Couldn't find one at all, so he was stuck. So he went out and in the garage and actually got a leaf blower and went upstairs and fired it up and uh, I, I don't know if uh, how it all came out exactly. It's one of the funniest stories I've ever heard. <laughs> All you have to do, I keep telling you, Doc, all you've got to do is you just got to get down there and talk to the people at Gordon Water Systems. I'm going to be president of Gordon Water someday. <laughs>